we are moving spots jumping units and uh, seeing what we can turn up we're gonna go to the swamp going there I'm gonna go check out the swamp have fun and uh, on to some new territories dear Heavenly Father it's uh, it's another season and above anything we just want to say thank you thank you thank you for all the blessings that you've given us we love you keep us safe and uh, just let our families at, uh, at home know that we're having a great time in Jesus name amen, amen. just save your breath We also spring bear hunt this and from this exact stump is where Troy killed that bruiser during spring season. Just one of those right place, right time, pop out here. It was early. We didn't think the bears would be out yet. Sure enough, it's feeding there at 60 yards. Pretty awesome experience, but we've had a lot of elk memories in and around this whole area. I think all of us have killed a bull up here except me. <laughs> and I don't have a tag this year, so uh, Matt and Troy are up. We're, uh, Hopefully find who that looks like. No. Uh, hopefully gonna find a couple bulls and get them killed. We've got a few more days here before we head to eastbound and down. Seen those? It's a Peruvian hamsters. Yeah. I, I think the ones that got the bangs. If I'm wrong, don't yell at me. But yeah, yeah. Peruvian hamster. No spirit animal. You guys, we get that excited for a bugle. Yeah, 
He's tucked right on the end. He's right, right where he's right. supposed to be. Yeah. Right where he's supposed to be. So, like when I said they usually go out that road and they usually yeah. pipe, he's right where he's supposed to be. That's bad getting him off that end now anymore. Yeah, we'll probably come from around, I would say. See what we get on our way to it. Nice job. Thank you. Doing pretty good. Wind and then the water down there too. But if you if you try not to cross it, it's not bad. It's not too bad. <laughs> it's not too great at times either. Yeah, just don't cross like right. Yeah, so alright, so if you look behind me right here, look how fast. See how fast those clouds are moving. So that's not even at high speed, that's just normal speed. So what that's doing is sucking in the marine layer and what it's gonna do is just sock this thing in with fog. It may or may not, I mean, it could be um, just a little bit of fog just in some low places, but what that does is really screws with the wind. It's not like a steady, like direct wind. Like everybody says, oh, it's going down in the morning and then 10 o'clock it comes up after the sun rises. It does totally different shifty things. So that fog will come in and come out sometimes. It'll do all sorts of weird things. So that's when you're hunting real close to the ocean. It You can't go by the rule of thumb of down in the morning and up in the middle of the day kind of thing. You have to kind of just play with the hand that you're dealt. So we'll just have to see every scenario is different. And, um, the biggest thing is just making sure everything's right before you like make your final move. Uh, not another spinner camp over there. Uh, we've got a rap concert going this morning. We're just <laughs> hammering Logic's new album. Uh, just uh, making my morning cup of joe. Um, since my truck is in the shop, I forgot my coffee cup, so I'm just rocking a silly pint this morning. Oh, I'm kind of a mess without my little system that I got going, so pretty much any chance I have to ask for something, Trent's kind of giving me a hard time about it. Right, Trent? What's that? Yeah. So uh, we got those two bulls going last night. We're gonna drop into the swamp, aka Narnia, and uh, go kill us some bull. It's gonna be a good morning. I feel actually really confident because uh, the last uh, five days has been a bit of a struggle. So we're finally in some elk that has a bull, <laughs> not just cows or spikes, right? Hope you guys like good elk footage. <laughs> All right. That's all I'm saying. Hope you like good elk footage because that's going to happen. I'm not sure what that means. I'm going to simulate the look of a calf. I'm going <laughs> to sacrifice one here for the team, guys. <laughs> so that, bowl, that bowl is just going to come. I don't even know if that's a real thing. <laughs> but I like it. Matt? Where'd I miss? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna call this old school. It's like that duck camo, you know, the old school duck camo. Oh yeah. Forgot we were at the elk camp rave. Just partied all night, just into the morning. Got the glow sticks, they just died. Having a good old time, boys. Camp morale is actually really high this morning. <laughs> Energy level jacked. Yeah, it's stage level 10. See that? It's like it. Half inch of clear. That would be butter and MCT oil. That's my morning fuel. So if we do get a few back, like, don't celebrate this time. Just listen for another one. 
happens when someone else goes off or something like that. Just let's just listen and really pinpoint it. And if nothing happens, it's probably my fault. bad to shoot from over there.
round two coming up shortly. Did you see one? I just saw them turn around and take off. They weren't they weren't there when we got up top. You didn't see them. We'll just kind of back out and give them some time. Yeah, it looked like there was three legal bulls and then one spike, wasn't it? Yeah. I found a frog on the stump. Right here. Now that I look at it, it's not as cool as I thought it's it was going to be. <laughs> You're free. <laughs> How are you feeling? I feel better now. I, mean, I'm not, I don't feel super pumped. I, I really wanted to shoot that elk. You know, it, it, he played right into our hands like we wanted him to. Trent did an awesome job calling him in. We got the wind right, got around over the top of him even though they were in the bottom. We set Troy up higher and I was down lower thinking he was going to come up over the top and wind up coming down the trail and have Troy get a broadside shot because he was really first shooter. That bull came straight in out the bottom. I drew at the right time. He came through, cow called, he took a few more steps up. I could have shot him when I first saw him. Yeah, you know, that's when I first cow called through the ferns. What I don't know is like, well, it worked out fine. I'm just also questioning, did I cow call too early? You know, or should I have should I have waited until he cleared? But in any case, it worked. I wanted to get him to turn and look at me, and it's exactly what he did. Stepped up and gave me a, a, a full frontal. I was at full draw, I was at seven yards. And you you can see it. Uh, I, this is the first time I've ever decided to commit to hunting with a hinge release. It's the only thing I've practiced with this year and I'm shooting it really well. Uh, I, I didn't feel like I was overly excited, but I obviously had lost my mind because you'll you can see I'm at full draw and I do this and what happened there is I took the safety off like it was a trigger. I clicked it off and like then jerked like the bow was going to fire. The helpful thing about the fact that it wasn't a trigger release is I, if I would have done that, if I would have fired at that moment, I wouldn't have realized everything that was going wrong in my entire process at that point which was the fact that I wasn't anchored. So I clicked it and jumped and realized, like, oh yeah, hinge release. And I realized at that moment in time, I'm over here just like staring at the bull. And so I went to pull myself inside of my peep to get in my peep. And as I was doing that, rotated it and it went off. And thank God I missed like probably 18 inches off center point of aim because the height was good. It ended up like you would imagine if you're over here as a right-handed shooter and shot left and probably missed his body, I don't know, by four inches or so off the left shoulder. Uh, moral of that story for myself is when I draw, I need to get in my peep and anchor immediately. That's the first thought that's got to go in my head upon drawing his anchor because if I was anchored up on that, we'd be packing meat right now. Well, guys, it's midday, so... Not midday, I think it's about 11 o'clock. Um, what happened was with those elk this morning, they came in, shot at the one, they actually came back in again. Kind of curious, some smaller bulls did, and uh, we've just been slow playing it, so they, we let them move off. We quit calling, hopefully, that we can slip in to where we think they're bedded. We have an idea of where they're bedded, and maybe get them to come back in, so. It was just a bummer. Matt just, and, and that's hunting, you know, that's just the way it is. It's like you, you mentally prepare for everything that you can, but in that moment when you're excited and you've, and you've shot your bow all season and you've gotten ready and trained, if you will, and all this kind of stuff, and it comes down to that. Like Matt, he is shooting laser beams at 115 yards at camp, you know, and he's, I saw him put, I mean, like three arrows in a, in a pie plate like that. But when it all came down, I mean, that bull was at like six or seven yards and he didn't have his release. It wasn't, he shoots a back tension hinge, which I'm not super familiar with, but anyway, it was just a, 
if that bull would have came to 20 yards and just stood there long enough for him to get all his self dialed and everything, I had no 110% that bull would have been dead. But it just, it was just fast. It came in fast. It was head on. I mean, the shot opportunity, he didn't take a bad shot as far as like the position of the elk or anything like that. It just, he wasn't looking through his peep. He got so excited that he just wasn't looking through his peep. And that's why the arrow went to the left of the elk. But it could happen to anybody. And I think that when the, the, the important part here is how you move forward, right? It's, you could, you could dwell on that and beat yourself up or, you just gotta just put it behind you, learn from it, and move on. And that's what we're, you know, we had a long talk just a little bit ago and sit down and just like talk to him and just like, where are you at headspace wise? And he's in a good place, he's fine. And just frustrated, you know, you work hard for the whole week and then we get our opportunity and then it doesn't, doesn't quite come through. But that's the whole team side of things. You don't wanna get down on them. That's just, hey, stay positive. We're gonna get another one. And guess what, we are. I think we're gonna go do it right now. Well, we've done the slow play, it's been three hours. We're back to where we last called them in. We've just kind of slipped about 150 yards over the edge there. We're just gonna really slowly work our way through this timber. There's a bench kind of wrapped around the corner. It sounded like maybe the rest of the herd moved out the bottom and those rags were right here. So we're just gonna cow call, take our time, try not to bump them. Doesn't look like there's been anybody around here, so we don't want to just come in here like a wrecking ball and blow them up, but uh, also don't want to not try to kill them. So just take our time. We got good wind, then ease on in there. He, he's got two and a half foot legs. I got four foot legs. I don't understand the math on that one.
this next ridge, the bull bugle is not super far. They just kind of had to hit the dirt. Don't really know what's going on now. I'm just calling. The bull hasn't moved since. All right. He hasn't bugled since, so I don't know. Maybe, I don't know if he saw him. It's cool. He's 
He's just like Cameron, so honestly. He's, mine's just a hair of my house. He's just his, like Cameron. His main beam's got the wave, and then his seven has the wave. I was looking through the camera like, oh yeah, that's a nice bowl. I got him the binoculars. I'm like, Matt, how far? He goes, 143. Shoot. You got this. Did you see any cows? No, no. but he kept looking back. Okay. Yeah, he's, he's got it. There's a giant bull back there. It's like a like a huge bull that you can see from the top. So that's why his bugle sound like a sonar. Yeah, it's right here. I'm crest of the ridge. I mean, he bugled that last time. Oh, it was like he was close right there. Oh, the moral of the story is don't judge a book by its cover or the sound of the cover because a little squeaky bugle turned into one of the biggest bulls we've ever seen. They're closer than they sound. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of the time. Lesson four, Born and Raised Call Company, www.bornandraisedoutdoors.com or www.callco, Born and Raised, something like that. Links in the description. Just click the button, get yourself one. See that? See that? Get that? How good does it feel to be hiking up out of a unit at dark again? It feels pretty good. Pretty blessed to be out here. Tonight's one of those nights like. Yeah, we didn't kill the bulls we called in. We had some great encounters. Got to see one of the best bulls, Roosevelt's I've ever laid eyes on. Pretty special. Being here with all my brothers and soaking it up and it's only 2nd of September, so just thinking about all the rest of the fun we're gonna have this month. Pretty jacked up and hot and sweaty too. Like here and here and kind of everywhere, but it feels pretty, I don't know, I like this part of the hunt where it's like, things didn't come together. I think, you know, you could be really deflated about what went down, that you didn't get it killed, but it's like, in the end of it all, it doesn't really matter. I mean, we'll kill it or get close again or may not kill it, but we're gonna have fun trying it and going after him. Pretty special time to be in the elk woods. The great, the great debate is how long does stuff stay good after the ice melts in the cooler? <laughs> Checking. <laughs> Morning, guys. Is that how Cody does it? Morning, campers. More. <laughs> Morning, campers. We're going after Dale today. And if you're wondering who Dale is, he's a new member of Born and Raised who measures in probably in the 300s. Far too large. Um, yeah, we're gonna drop in after him today and see if we can call him in and if like a little barely legal three point walks in, shoot him too. So that's the goal, that's the plan. We're gonna strap in boots, load up our packs, and it is completely fogged in as it is usual in Roosevelt country. Wish us luck. Lord God. Thank you for this morning, these friends, these experiences that we have together because of you and your creation and what you've allowed us to participate in and have. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunities that you've given all of us to be in the place that we are, where we can come together and where, apart from each other, we can still understand each other's intentions and hearts. God, help to fill us with your love and your mercy. Send your thoughts and prayers to the people. Send our thoughts and prayers and your strength to the people of Afghanistan and the Middle East as our country is once again 
thrown into more dismay and destruction. Lord, remind us that through trials and tribulations comes steadfastness and an opportunity to build faith and love for you, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit who you left here to guide us through times of challenge. In your name, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Found that bowl again from last night. We had a long loop all the way down this other road system and hiked in here, peaked up over the edge like within 100 yards where we left him, 200 yards maybe. And they're right in the bottom corner of the unit. So the wind's sucking down like that, all the fog's getting in the Sun's coming up here on the east of us. It's gonna take a while, so we're gonna hang out for probably a couple hours at least, I would say. I won't make a move till about 10 or 11, maybe even later. Just don't want to mess this one up, be conservative, but yeah, be aggressive. So, um, yeah, we're, uh, we're now telling stories again and pulling up the county. Just, uh, just check this out. Watch. floppy ears. She might have to do that some work. The, the big thing is trying not to get on this bowl in the clear cut. The wind's for one. Wind's bad. And sight is his big advantage. So we'll wait till they bed up in that timber and go do some midday madness. I come in like a wrecking ball. Just get him up. The big thing, like even last night, that bowl, you saw he just kept looking back. We, knew, we, knew, we figured he had cows and turn up. He did, and uh, trying to call that bull in on their feet while they're all up is a little bit more challenging. But midday, a lot of times, all the cows are doing their thing, hanging out, and he's more apt to break out of that, uh, you know, 100 yards circle of that herd. So uh, that's what I know. That's what we're going to do. Let me show you my ensemble here. And we're going to go kill a bull of a lifetime, so I'm going to need a raping horn that Cody found yesterday. I got the GoPro, so. It's hard for you guys to see me in a good light. I'm going like this and then I have to do this at the same time. So I just put a lanyard through the middle. I don't think anybody's ever thought of that. No. It's a good thing you don't have that trophy shed that Cody found earlier. That would have been hard to back. Yeah, the Cody shed from earlier, I don't know if I would have been able to lift it to rake it. Okay, we have given this bull ample amounts of time to go get laid down, go get nice and comfy in his bed and for the wind to get stable. Now we're gonna walk, hike back over there, walk down, do a little little soft calling. We just need to give him to give away his location. And then we got this, right? I think we're getting in that I think we'll be okay.
We've sat a lot today. We walked a lot in the morning and sat all day long, waiting for these elk to come out. Nothing, it's 6.30 and nothing. So we don't know where the big boy, where the big boy and his herd went. He out bamboozled us so far, but we're just gonna do some sound check and get up on top of this back ridge up here. That way we can look around, do some sound check and hopefully locate him. It's called hunting, not harvesting. Hunter, gatherer, we could pick berries. goes into like if this elk's been living in here for the last two weeks and there's not been another single hunter hunter soul or, or other elk then all of a sudden the first time you bugle on him it's 200 yards it's like whoa you know versus i don't know yeah versus him responding for a long, for a long yeah so. some and, but sometimes like we'll bugle and bugle <laughs> He'd bugle all the way down this ridge, and the bulls heard you every single time, but then he finally decides to answer, you know. I don't know. You win some and you lose some. <laughs> we just lost a humdinger. No, it just, you gotta do what you gotta, you think is going to be best, and that's what we did, and it was not. We didn't see an elk. We sat in the same spot for five hours. Yesterday it paid off for us, and hey, uh-uh, no, so. It's okay, we're just gonna roll with the punches. Uh, season is just, just getting underway, so. That's where we're at right now. We got about a three mile hike out of here, and tomorrow's a new day. So I hope you guys like the way that we've been setting up these videos. It's uh, It's been a lot more fun, like putting these small series, mini series together. And um, anyway, just to recap, what you've seen in this video is, yeah, we had a big time draw unit that we could not really capitalized we couldn't find many elk in we botched that to an over-the-counter general tag and we got in here the night before the next day we called I think five bulls in and saw one of the biggest bulls of our lives which I don't even know how to explain it honestly it was pretty amazing and so I mean the takeaway for me is don't be afraid to just switch things up. Yeah, we could have came wherever and not seen anything, but if we didn't try, it seemed like when we were in the same spot, and that's a good thing I think for people to listen to, if you're in the same spot and you're not around elk, you gotta do something. Don't beat your head against the wall. Just move. It, it, a lot of times, if anything else, it boosts morale because it's new country to see. So it worked. This time, it worked out for us and we got in on some elk. And so anyway, I hope you guys like this video. I hope you guys like the next one coming.